来来来来来来来来来来来来来来。The first great rabbi to call himself rabbi was Yochanan ben Zakkai in the first century, and according to the Talmud, he once asked his students, "What does it take to walk the world and do the right thing, to be the right way in the world?" And one of the students said to have an eye for the good, the good in other people, to praise the abilities and contributions of other people. And another one said to be a good neighbor. Another one said to have a good friend. And another one said to have the intelligence and foresight to see the consequences of one's choices. But the wisest of the students said, "Rebbe, the only way to be the kind of person you want us to be is lev tov." To have a good heart, and the rabbi shook his head and said, "Exactly right, because all the other answers, all the other qualities that you've discussed, are contained in that." You know, there are rabbis whose oratory is so inspiring it changes the way that we walk the world, and there are rabbis whose scholarship is so deep that it changes the way we read our holy books, and there are rabbis who do mitzvahs, who do selfless acts in the world. Which make us all feel so remarkable about the heroism and the giving, but there is a kind of rabbi whose goodness encompasses all of that, and that's Rabbi Eli Spitz. He's lev tov. He has a good heart. He has a sweet soul. He has a sweet and good and kind disposition, and he makes us all feel that we have a voice in this world and the possibility of bringing tikkun. Of bringing the world closer together, I'm Rabbi Ed Feinstein. I'm a friend, a colleague, a student of Rabbi Spitz, and with all my heart, Eli, I wish you our blessings as you complete this part of your life. But may God always give you the strength to continue to share with the world your lev tov, your good and kind and learned and sweet heart. Take good care and all my blessings. Hi, my friend Eddie Feinstein. So I I always like to just say a word about the person and to express my gratitude. I met Rabbi Feinstein for the first time. On B Street, our warehouse, when I first became a rabbi here in Tustin, at that moment, Rabbi Feinstein had just been named director of Camp Ramah in Ojai, and he came to me and he said, "Guide me, tell me what you would like to see at Camp Ramah." And I talked and told him a bit, and then he said, "Join me." Bring your family. I would be honored to have you and your family come and be at Camp Rama. Our children were quite young at the time, and when he left, I was aware he had not said anything to me to sell me the camp. He had only listened to me. He had genuinely wanted to know my opinion, and when he left. I felt that I wanted to be his partner, and we began to go with our children to Camp Rama. And when I went, he on Saturdays in the afternoon would tell a story to each age group, and then they would get a special treat of a ice cream cone to eat. And I followed him around the entire afternoon from. Story to story, and was both mesmerized by his gift for storytelling, and inspired to want to become a storyteller, and began to learn how to tell a story better. That's how I first met Eddie Feinstein, but I went on to watch him become the rabbi of Valley Beth Shalom. When he Was the successor to one of his heroes, Rabbi Harold Schulweis, one of my heroes. In fact, Eddie would also earn a doctorate 
from the Jewish Theological Seminary on a dissertation written about Harold Schulweis. And he did something that I've not seen any other rabbi do. And now I am moving into politics. About four years ago, he gave a high holiday sermon about fear and our nation. And he called out the Trump administration by name as a purveyor of fear within America. People stood up and walked out. They lost some congregants over a political speech. And I called him. He got also a standing ovation, by the way. I said to him, Eddie, tell me about that speech. He said, you know, I never talk politics. Honestly, I don't talk politics. But people came to me and they said, you're Rabbi Harold Schulweis's successor. Rabbi Schulweis was all about conscience, about standing up for your principles. And I felt in honoring my mentor, I had to speak from conscience about what I saw as broken before us. Last, Rabbi Feinstein is for me the rabbi's rabbi. I often say to myself, I know he is the son of bakers, used to getting up early in the morning and working hard through the day. He is the James Brown of rabbis. He is the hardest working rabbi in the pulpit. But whatever he does, he brings his full self to it with wisdom and with heart. It's a privilege to call Rabbi Eddie Feinstein. Thank you, Rabbi Eddie, my friend.